The Melting Pot Oral History Series is generously funded in part by the Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. I'm Lorraine Betty Lewis Corey, and um, I've lived in Jacksonville my whole life. First generation here from home, Syria. My grandfather came, his name was George Bruchera. He came in like 1907 and went to Detroit, Michigan because there was work there in the auto factories and it was easily accessible to get there. Lived with his older brother who had come before him. It wasn't until 1913 or maybe 1912 when he brought my grandmother Annie and her baby daughter who was seven uh, who became my mother and they came without knowing one word of English, either one of them. Came on a 14-day trip, came through La Havre, France, and to Mama it was very exciting because she was always interested in everything. And she said when they landed in New York, it was like being in heaven. And they went and lived in Detroit for a while, and uh, my grandparents started having children, but the weather there was too cold for them. So they moved south and came as far as uh, Ocean Way, Florida. One of my daughters tells me that my grandfather should have gone about 10 miles more and ended up in Ponte Vedra, but he didn't. <laughs> so we were in Ocean Way for all of our lives. Right? We are, we've been very fortunate and blessed. Um, we have, in our family, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have teachers. We have people who uh, uh, give back to the community, but we were, we didn't know we were poor, but we were. And we were given so much love and attention that I don't think the poorness, so there's just different things that you remember, but to this day, when I drive around with my children, which I, I wouldn't drive in the city today, it is so different. It is so big. We used to have a community that went as far as University Boulevard and one way to the beach. And you just, you knew it and you spent a lot of time there, but that's as far as our city went and now it goes on forever. So, but when we got to Beirut, that's when we started the process of, you know, going out and on a ship and we traveled and came here. And my uh, uncle received us here. And what year did you arrive? In that was in 1963, and uh, and you were 13. You I was said. 13. Yes. And uh, on the way over here, you know, we stopped in different countries. Like we stopped in Rome and uh, Italy and uh, and uh, other places. You know, as we came over here, the ship, you know, had a bad storm. You know, we came, we went into Ellis Island, and when before we, I remember this very well. As we were coming into Ellis Island, New York was just lit up, and it was so beautiful. I still see it in my head, and uh, it was uh, a proud moment to get there. It's a beautiful country, and uh, we had a lot of opportunities. My father opened up a grocery store and uh, he was very successful at the grocery store, but he died about uh, nine years ago. Uh, it was very uh, hard for us to lose him. He was uh, our mother and father. But my oldest sister actually acted like the mother, you know, when my, when my mother died, you know. And she, oh, your older sister? we all live in Jacksonville, um, and we all live within a mile of each other. So we were actually together, and my father started this. Every Sunday, we all meet at a restaurant and be there together. I uh, started working in New Delhi, uh, in the air conditioning field. We had some contracts, servicing contracts with different embassies. We used to go and service their equipment. And, uh, uh, High Commissioner's House, uh, Embassy itself, and uh, used to go and see all those luxury, which was uh, not possible for a middle class man. And I used to always get 
be it on three, three eleven. It's gotta have stuff like that. And uh, that that was the one reason I got encouraged to come to America. That it's possible if you make it there, you can have all that. Actually, I got married in 1980, and my wife was already here before marriage. And uh, after we got married in Delhi, she sponsored me to come to the United States. And uh, I had to go to the American Embassy for interview and all that. And that's how I got my immigration through my spouse. And so uh, I was very proud, and I still am very proud of my parents, um, because I try to put myself in their shoes. I can only imagine what it's like to make a conscientious decision to leave your own home country and try to start life all over again. I don't know what that's like, and, and many of us don't, uh, but very appreciative that they had the courage, like many other immigrants that come to the U.S. that want to start a new life. I didn't want to leave my family. I, uh, I loved what I, where I was, what I did. Um, so it was kind of a difficult decision for me to make uh, and leave the U.S. He tried everything to convince me that to come. Before, he wanted us to live in Ghana because he didn't want to come back to the U.S. And then later on, he said it would be nice if I get to meet his family, which I left my family, everything I dreamt of and built up. So for me to start my own family, I have to go with the decision I made to marry him and after I married him. Well, um, when I first arrived, I didn't work. He didn't want me to work. Um, he knew where I came from and who I was. He, he, pretty much he was the only one I can say in the whole entire U.S. who knew who I was. My father, one part I didn't mention, besides him being a magistrate, was the chief of our village, which he never stayed to become the chief. So that makes me a little princess. My husband and I were quite involved with a few or some um, things that were taking part in Jacksonville. Uh, and one example was uh, the Well of Nations celebration put together by the city of Jacksonville. Opened me up to, as you mentioned earlier, culture family. And I've been involved since the past 26 years. Joseph and I have been, and I never stopped representing Ghana. Every year I participate in that. So it's a whole diverse, different kind of family that I'm involved with, including the city of Jacksonville, which I'm very happy and proud of that. And I look forward to that every year. It's one of uh, the hardest things to do. A slogan of uh, peace called the hardest job to have, but you love doing it. I was born in Copley, Da Nang, Wang Nam, Vietnam, shortly after World War II in September 1946. I am the number one, number five in the family. And my parents, by the, by the time I was born, they already have four children before me. And they have a boy and three girls. To me, number five, mom want to have the boy so they can work in the farm. But I am the girl. The midwife said that the girl. And mom said, put her in the track can. And when I worked for American, the first job, I worked for the motor pool in the number one Khan Hoi. And then since that day, they moved to London, so I did not go with them. So they moved to, I went to the work for the senior officer club. And then I worked from there, and then I went to work for Special Force, where I met Commander Bola. We came here and I started to work. You know, Where did we, you work? We rent the house on Carmichael and I work for the shoe city for the dollar sixty cent an hour. And I work twenty hours a week. And from there I but I learned American system because the credit card. Because back home 
you have buy everything you have pay cold cap, no such a credit card. But when I work with the shoe city, and the lady come in and hand me a plastic card, and I scan it and she signed the name in the end of the day. Uh, ask how that the money. And then I came home, asked my husband, what happened? And he said, oh, that's American. You don't need the money to buy things. So the next day, I called. Oh, I thought, oh, yes, American. You don't need the money to buy things. And now, the next day, I called to Mr. William. I told Mr. William, my husband is full commander. But we don't have money, but I want to buy the house. And then Mr. William told Was me. Was he a real estate? Yeah. Yeah. And then we came to buy the, the house. It was a pretty normal childhood, I think, growing up in the 50s and the early 60s. Um, Britain was obviously changing a lot in those days. Uh, the, the Second World War had ended and Britain was fairly broke. Uh, so everything was being uh, established on new lines. Uh, we had the National Health Service and uh, all that sort of change was going on at the same time. I came to the US in 2006. Um, we basically, uh, Kathy and I both basically decided we would live in the US. And Kathy is your wife. Kathy's my wife. Uh, she's an American lady. Um, and we decided we would live in the US rather than the UK uh, because uh, Edna, uh, Kathy's mom was getting very old and she actually helped me move businesses because I had a computer business which uh, sold in the UK and moved uh, across to here. Uh, Kathy put in an advertisement in the yellow pages because in those days the internet still wasn't that big. Oh, one had websites but most people would look in the phone book back in 2006 if they were looking for a service. And the, uh, we put an advert in, bought a, a cell phone, and the business kicked off from there. Uh, and it took off really well. It was a good time to, to move across. Uh, Kathy's a mental health professional. She's a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And she works with the homeless, um, hitherto, and now with the severely mentally ill people. Um, who uh, have been released from the state hospital or are due to go into the state hospital, but there is no room for them. Uh, so she has her work cut out. So between the two of us, we're, we're pretty busy all the time. One evening, uh, they were so excited. They said they are winning a war. They were cheering. And so now I'm looking back and when uh, Japanese military bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. I was five years old when I, you know, figured out the age and the year. So I was five years old, but I remember that. No, yeah. I think what happened was Japanese government recruited the family to go to the San Shoto to raise rice and all kind of stuff. So you know, like I said, I was seven, so I didn't know why, you know, my father left or. So, but my father was very entrepreneur-like. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, be, before we e even went to China, she, he had a little store, you know. Right. Uh, and then after we came back and built the house, and he tried a, quite a different uh, businesses. He had a little store, then he tried a, a bathhouse, you know, you, you heard bath. So that's how it started. So he knew, my. So, I mean, he had a plan when he offered me to write, and he knew what my schedule was going to be. You know, How much longer before you were married? Oh, we had to go through six, seven months interrogation. We had to have all kind of uh, the certificate, say, I'm certified this. As a, so Did you marry in Japan? Yeah. yeah. After we got married, my husband said he, he had, he had to go take advantage of uh, GI Bill to finish his uh, education, and he had the time limit. We lived in a um, revolt area. Yes, yes. But we operated business there, Mules and Wheels, and at, also at cafeterias. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we have a church members, have a gathering, you know. So, and uh, later on, we got contract with the 
military entrance examination station. So we provided meals, transportation, lodging. So we did all kinds of things. And immediately you finish that sometimes it's very difficult to get admission into the university. It would be very tough because of competition, because of uh, uh, very few you know, universities. So you, you struggle to get admission. It, it wasn't easy. So I put admission, I applied every other way. Uh, uh, India, United States, uh, Great Britain, everywhere through an admission, you know, I, I, for me. So fortunately for me, I have uh, admission here in the United States, you know, to come. You were accepted at I was, Edward Waters College? I was accepted at Edward Waters College, yes, ma'am. If I had an Edward Waters College and one university in uh, Washington, uh, I think they were too, too bad. I decided to come to Jacksonville because I have an uncle who was teaching here that I would come just to have a little bit of uh, <laughs> relief to somebody to stay with. And I, I had so many other small churches before God put in my spirit. I think it was 20, uh, 2012, 2012, uh, that uh, it's time for you to do something different for me. So, and with the blessing that God has blessed me with what I told you with Genesis medical equipment that I was doing, uh, there was money that God has blessed me with. Then the Lord said, I want you to put that money to, to do for the work of the kingdom. So. I used that money immediately. I said, Lord, I have to listen to you. So I used that money and I put it into the church. So we started a church. With all of this going on, you still work. And I still work. And you have long hours, correct? I know, but I don't know. My body's getting used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Your body's getting used to it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a priority. Yeah, if I don't even put my work as a man thing, but the church. For now, it's time to work for God. We have extended families, so I was very close to uh, my my cousins. Um, Do they all seven live of us. near each other? Yes, all, all we families? all live near each other, so we visited a lot. We spent every Christmas and every birthday of everyone was celebrated. So at least every other week there will be a big party, and people are. Um, take time to visit one another, and they take time to go out um, in Puerto Rico. Even though the financial situation of the island is so dire, still people are out and about all the time. I think the church in St. Augustine was very critical because um, having the opportunity of raising the children within the church, um, it was a very small congregation, and it was very, it was very good because my children, it was an older congregation, so my children did not have their grandparents available all the time, but they had 75 other grandparents that they saw on Sundays. And after the hurricane, we've talked about maybe buying property in Puerto Rico. So that's interesting. Why, why is that? I think it was because first, it, before the hurricane, it was just so accessible. It was there. You could go. You can do it any time. But suddenly, after the hurricane, it became something a lot more precious. And I come to United States first, 1977. My sister living in Kansas, so uh, I moved here first, and then I go back 1980, got married with him. And we moved, after Mary, we moved to Jacksonville, I think in 1981, January. We okay. At that time, I already have one child. He was, a, when coming, he's a three months old, but now he's a 37. And then a year later, we got twins. Actually, actually, she was one girl, so we tried, but two boys come out, so now we're three boys. It's three boys. <laughs> and no girls. Uh, no girls. No girls. Three. So first to three years, I feel like it, I only keep thinking about how I can support my family. Because she got three children, she cannot even work. And I work three jobs, about two years. First, I sold out the landscaping business. But the company is still there. They're still running about mm -hmm. almost more than 30 years. And then my orchid business is starting 2002, so about 16 years right now.
I, right, yeah. yeah. Also, my son want me get out the business. He want to do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to have more involved the community, the voluntary. So what I can do so for what Jackson we need there. Is, well, we got a lot of things from the in United States. And before, when I come to America, I didn't know really history about America, how it become so strong the America. But I read a book, a lot of book about how America is uh, so strong is uh, people like us to supporting this country. And anything volunteer working, you know. So what we can do is more looking for neighbor and the people who need the help because a lot of people helping us when we were really difficult time, when we have a tricky. In missions, yeah, Ecuador opens the opportunity in, in uh, Christian churches for young people to get involved, whether you can translate. And I was learning English, so I will get involved to translate, to sing songs for children, because that was my ministry to children and youth. And so then he came from Florida to these mission trips very often. He, he had traveled before um, 2000, 1997. So in 1994, he went, 1995, 1996. He will, he will go once a year, and I will go twice a year to get involved in missions. Uh -huh. My purpose was to learn the, Eng the English language and to serve in the field of missionaries. And so it was very nice uh, when I met him in 1997, finally. And I had graduated. I was graduating. I was graduating that year from college. So I was praying for a finally a husband, somebody to date. Uh, thank you. You can be a teacher. Um, that's not a. You cannot be a teacher if you're not a citizen. You can be a. Uh, uh, you ha you can have a. a a visitor, not a visitor, a work visa, and work as a, as a contractor from another country. But if you are here and you're living and you're forming a family, I thought the best thing to be was a citizen. I love America, so no problem with that. I decided to came in United States because my children, so in Korea is a uh, uh, it's very hard to study and then very hard to go to university. That's why so my husband and I decide uh, we so we need uh, something a big uh, opportunity to my children. Yes, yes. All of this in 13 years. You own a business, you own a home. Yes. And tell me about your children and what they're doing now. I know you have a 28-year-old mm -hmm. son, and what is he doing now? So he's doing now in, uh, he studied in Texas, Austin, so chemical engineering, yeah, PhD school. Yeah, he's in. He's studying for his PhD. Did he start his college education here in Jacksonville? Yes. yes. And where would where did he? UNF. He yeah. Start, UNF. Yeah. He studied uh, physical, uh, physics and mm -hmm. chemicals. Wow. Yeah, chemistry, and then uh, he went to so, Texas Austin. Yeah. Tell me about your daughter, what she's doing 13 years after arriving in the so Jacksonville. She studied in North Carolina, so pharmacy school. He, she uh, gra graduated uh, UNF, so, and then she went to uh, North Carolina last year. I moved here when I was 10, I'm turning 10. Um, in 2006, I've been here quite a while because I'm 21 now. So I've spent half of my life there and half of my life here. But most of my childhood was in the Philippines and I really enjoyed that. Um, we, compared to other families, we were pretty affluent. Um, so that helped out a lot. We had a lot of family in the States. So in terms of finances, in the, like a third world country like the Philippines, it wasn't too bad. Um, my brothers and sisters, my brothers, I do have brothers, I have two. I have a 13-year-old one and a 10-year-old one, but they didn't grow up in the Philippines. They're half Filipino, half American. 
so they were born here um, because my parent, my mom, she moved here when I was three, um, and she got settled and started a life, and then she brought me as well when you know when she got settled and she had a she had a stable job and everything. I like it. I like staying busy. As you you know you know me, so I I do a lot of things either in the community or just on campus, and that's how I like to live. I I don't like the. I guess I don't like having free time that much. I've been looking into it because I need to renew my passport. So I'm working on that, but I was also looking at citizenship. It's very costly. It's, yeah, it's six, because I was considering it just because it's such a hassle to have to renew a passport every few years and my green card. So I was thinking about citizenship, but it's like $600, $700 to do citizenship, you know? And that's just the application. You're not guaranteed that you're gonna get it because you have to take the test and the exams, the civil, civil exams. I'm sure I can pass it because I'm a history student. My, my dad is a business, he, we own a printing company there. My mom used to be a teacher, but uh, she retired early and uh, ran the, the business with my dad. I grew up, um, you know, helping the, the family business. So before I came here, I was already, you know, I, I, I was already immersed in in a business in, environment, if you will. I, I even in high school, I was already helping, doing payroll. That's why I ended up being an accountant. <laughs> the United States offer you so many opportunities. Because even in, if you compare it to the Philippines, a lot of us are, you know, well educated. But business wise, there's not a whole lot of business opportunities. That's why many people would come out, you know, would like to leave the Philippines. And these are highly educated people. Here in the United States, you have more opportunities to work or to do business. And that is a plus. And what I've learned in the United States is, you know, the virtue of being independent that, you know, as long as you have the willpower, you, you can pretty much have what you need or what you want to accomplish. My wife and I have a, an accounting firm, Karangi and Karangi PA. We also have a daycare. Oh. A day, yeah, uh, uh, a daycare, San Carlos Day School in Riverside. And um, next week I'm opening up a franchise. It's called the Cineholic in Mandarin. But over time, as I grow up, I started to learn about Martin Luther King and JFK, you know, Roosevelt, and you know, and uh, you know, all of these thinkers and, and, and movers and shakers in, that made America what it is today. I think that's when I, I said, oh, you know, this is it. That's the place where I, I want to live. So I emigrated to Montreal. The opportunity came around to move to Montreal. I have some friends, Canada is very open to uh, immigrants. And so I moved there and I lived for six years. In between, in between that, the, those six years, I got the chance to work in Miami for a year for a production company. And I, I was multilingual at that point, so I could uh, handle very well French, Spanish, and English. And, and that's why I got uh, a, a one-year contract to work in a production company. And that was my really first time that I immersed myself in America. And everything that I dream about, it was uh, real, it was true. Uh, the way that uh, people behave, the way the society is organized. As soon as I started to meet the people from Jacksonville, I loved it. I loved how the quality of life was so much higher than in Miami and Montreal, where you may meet people and never see them again. And here, there's a sense like we are all neighbors, like despite that it's very big, it's kind of like we all know each other somehow. So, and I, I love the people and, um, and that's, 
you know, that became my, my, my town, my city, and um, I've been very engaged to participate in everything I can.